Hi, so today's video we're going to be working on doing the coils in this. Now, my friend Mark does not like the camera, but hopefully he can yell at me and fill me in. Mark, what is this for a vehicle? 06 E250. An 06 E250. What engine do we have? 5.4. It's a 5.4 in it. He says in order to change the coils, you have to basically pull the motor. I think he's being a little mean, but it is what it is. In his words, it's a Ford thing. So the first thing we got to do is we got to get this air intake system out of here. We've got to take this all the way back through and take it off of the intake. And then on the inside, we'll have to pull the doghouse. Now, Mark wanted to point out to you guys that you're going to need a dielectric grease. And you're going to need your coils, obviously. And it is a 7 millimeter for the bolts for the coil. But he also wanted to let everybody know that a 9 30 seconds will also work if you don't have a 7 millimeter. So at this point, when you come inside the vehicle, you've got to go and pull your doghouse to get to everything. This is what's referred to as a doghouse. There's a latch there and a latch there. The whole assembly lifts out and through the passenger side. You can get it through the driver's side, but the steering wheel tends to go and make things less fun. So we're going to get that ripped out so that we can get to everything. Then I'll point out where they are. Doghouse out. What we ended up finding was that we had to go and pull that plate off in order to get the doghouse to actually twitch just a little to the side and then lift up at a weird kitty wampus angle and then out the door. So this is where you're trying to go and get to in here. And down in there is what you're trying to get to. Not the funniest thing in the world. Well, we're here on this stupid air intake. These things here will really rip your hair out eventually. But what you do when you're putting it back together is there is a notch right here that I'm about to pull out. See that notch? And that lines up right here with this clip in order to go and give you a mark. This rotates. So don't care at all about where this ends up. Just drive it right into here afterwards. But that mark there is what goes with this clamp right here in order to line it up. Wish I had known that about three hours earlier. In between debating whether Con Air or The Rock is the best Nicolas Cage movie... We've discovered that that fuel rail there has to come out, and that has to be done from the doghouse side. But on my side of things, I'm currently trying to reach this intake clamp that's all the way back here. And the side over there, the clamp is behind this throttle sensor that I can't get to, but I can get to this one, which should let me get most of the box out of there. But I still have to take the rest of this off so that I can get to the coil that is nicely hidden right there. That's the plug going into it. And the other one is behind the fuel rail over there. We've decided this is probably a two-day project at this point. All right. These clips, this one here and this one here, officially suck. So... It looks as if all you do is push down on it and give it a tug. You don't. I just got informed that you push down, you push in, and then you hope that when you pull out, it comes off. That sucks to do. So let's see if we can do this one on camera. We're going to push down. Ow, as I slice my finger. Let's try this with the other hand. Okay. Push down, push in, pull out. There we go. And we got the finger. You're going to do that a lot on this project. Hopefully you're wearing gloves. All right, so we got the PCV line out. And I just wanted to show you the end of this. So what you do is you push this little tab over and it opens it up. There's not very much holding that on and no O-ring or anything in the top of it. So it just slips right off. But 
it's just a brittle little piece of plastic, so be delicate. Progress update. So the fuel rail is loose on that side now that the electric pressure regulator is undone over there, which I had to do from that direction. And you have to go back and forth to undo this control piece that's in here. You have to do one bolt from the intake side and one bolt from the doghouse side. So at this point, this fuel rail should be able to come loose and pull up. And wanted to make sure to give a note here that the moment you get this out, you want to take pressed, uh, compressed air, go through and spray out everything. Because the last thing you need is something dropping down into your injectors or dropping down into when you do these coil packs. So be careful, go through, clean everything the moment you get to the point this thing is out. At this point, make sure that you dance around in victory because you finally managed to go and get that fuel rail to come out through the back end of the doghouse. So I had to undo that bracket, pull this hose out, had to lift this side up over the top of the intake to go sideways to come out this way to fold up in order to roll to this direction and then sit. So you can see the coil packs. One, two, three four on this side and one two three four on that side and be careful to watch out for injectors that lost the o-rings that one lost one and that one lost one so i've got to pick them back out of the fuel rail we called the local auto zone and found out that they're sold by the four pack for about seven bucks not too bad there we go. We got the first coil out, and I just wanted to go and show you when you go to put these back in. Right here is where you're going to add your dielectric grease to on the bottom. And you're also going to add it right here where there's this little seal groove here. So that it fills it up, and you can see that there's one side that's still nice and clean, like it should be. And the other side that gets grungy because it was sealed away. And... That right there was a 7 millimeter. What we ended up finding was we had to use a brand spanking new 7 millimeter socket because those were rusted and an older socket was just a little loose and starting to jump. But we got it out and it goes right down in there. And we're going to now work down through doing the rest of them. We ended up going ahead and deciding to go and do the spark plugs because as you can see, they definitely need to be done. Uh, the little tidbit that I'll hand off to you is that the spark plugs are actually in at an angle. So this side here is angled towards the front and this side here is angled towards the rear. So a ratchet with a pivoting head definitely helps. You're going to need a six inch extension for some of them with a three inch in order to fit the ones that are in the front area. And the other recommendation, I'll make sure to post a link for these, is palm ratchets. Because once you get it started with this, you can set the palm ratchet on and be able to twist everything around inside there. And it helps you line things up also. All right. Now to try and get the rest done. So when you got a socket that's new like this one or the boot on the inside is worn out, it tends to drop out. And when you're doing these Ford spark plugs, they're about six inches down in the hole. So what my friend Mark does is he wedges a little tiny piece of paper in one that's missing the boot so that it holds the socket in place while he puts it in. And then you can blow the little piece of paper out of the hole afterwards. That way you're not having to go and fish out that little rubber boot in the bottom of a six inch hole underneath the dashboard of these things. Well, Mark demonstrates how a palm ratchet is really useful for this project. We did want to point out that we discovered there were magnetic spark plug sockets that we could purchase and I'll post a link for those down below. It would have made the job easier. Let's see if we can get you guys down here to see this. So. We got this rail in. We had to do that one from the engine bay side, these three from this side. And we were able to do the two front ones on the engine bay side and the two rear ones here. 
And the one thing I wanted to point out is these are spring-loaded. So when you go to put them in, you kind of have to push it over towards the bolt side, line the bolt up, and the coil actually still sits like a good three-eighths up. And you've got to tighten it down slowly down into where it's supposed to be. It's not like an old-fashioned plug where you push it in and it clicks. You're never going to feel that. There's no kickback whatsoever other than the spring. It just takes feeling it in and then pushing it down. Um, otherwise than that, we're at the point we can put the fuel rail back on. So we're going to take each one of these O-rings. We're going to put a little bit of oil on it. The old thing to do was putting Vaseline on it. But the manual that we were reading says that oil is better. So we're going to just use some motor oil on it. Well, here we go. Cycled the fuel pump three times. Let's see if it comes to life. So we're going to check down through and make sure there's no fuel rail leak. Just in case we need to do O-rings. Uh, we look to be doing pretty good. So there you go. That's your coil install, spark plugs. Couple of nice little hints. Good luck with yours.